What's up? <coughs> Flair failed a quiz about video games? <coughs> and, she, and she sent a robot back in time to erase all video games? <coughs> ah, just some of them. Cool. Less games for me to do. <coughs> She sent him me, Leo. <laughs> Flare! Couldn't keep it to yourself, could you, Robro? You bring a Miglio back right now, Flare. No can do, Otter. I need to pass that quiz. You have access to a time machine. You can just go back and already know the questions. But time travel tickles. Don't make me go wake up myth. Fine, fine. If you play this game and find all the clues I've hidden, you can go back in time and find Emiglio all by yourself. Jumpstart, third grade. Much like when I reviewed fourth grade, I played this game as a kid, and much like when I reviewed fourth grade, I never finished it as a kid because of how often I was allowed to play games. So now, as an adult, I am back to tell you how it holds up. But before I do that, I have to first say thank you to Matt for letting me use his copy of the game. This was actually his request and was the first request that I ever received for my channel. I am infinitely sorry that it took me this long to get it. Mia Copa. The premise for this game is that you are a new student to a fancy school with advanced technology. Before you can begin your first day of school, a robot named Botley crash lands demanding your help. Polly, the daughter of the world's greatest scientist that you've never heard of, failed the school's pop quiz by trying to cover up her lack of knowledge with completely obvious sarcastic answers. The teacher didn't fall for this and flunked her. Instead of accepting a failing grade, she sent her father's robots back in time to change history. For no discernible reason, she's hidden four mission clues around her father's lab for each robot that you can use to program the time machine. You receive the hidden clues for completing the different games. Let's start on the first floor with the first game. You solve some very basic math problems to get into the kitchen where you put different amounts of ingredients into a bowl for this robot, Mort, to eat. You're sure about this? Okay! won't mince words. I hate this one. Firstly, it's so slow you have to wait for each new ingredient to appear before you can use it. This actually gets even worse at higher difficulties because they keep sending the ingredients slowly, even if a little bit faster, but they also add more things onto the conveyor belt that aren't actually ingredients you need that just take up even more time. While I don't have the footage, the highest difficulty is also way too hard. Yes, I'm saying a third grade educational game was too hard for me. The reason is because they will create equations such as Mort wants 315 grams of chili pepper and your droppers only come in sizes like 2,000, 300,000, 12,000, and 7. Figure out how those combine to get that number. Okay, seriously? No one will ever need that because there's this fascinating thing called simplification in math. I will never be asked to produce 34 quarters of cream, I will be asked for 9 and 1 quarter cups, and I will measure this with a full cup and a quarter cup. I will not measure it with a seventh cup and a third cup. Finally, unlike the other puzzles, this piece hasn't been hidden. Mort's just a d He had the piece the whole time and he just refuses to help save the world unless he gets to eat first. I hope the professor locks you out of the kitchen permanently from now on, Mort, not inside it. Even if I can tell why he's probably doing it so he doesn't have to be around you, ever. 
The next room on the first floor is the art gallery and the art collection. They're both inside the same room, but are of wildly different difficulty. The art gallery is where you make your own art. You have a full paint tool, but the actual challenge will never call for it. There are predetermined backgrounds, animated elements, and sounds. You match the little story Polly wrote with what's on the canvas and you receive the hidden item. It doesn't teach much more than follow the directions, but for a third grade audience, I can't complain. I think the art collection is much too difficult, though. Uh, not for me. It was absurdly easy for me. But for a nine-year-old? Polly will reference a piece of art, and you need to go through the collection to find what she's referring to. The robot who works in the gallery will give you small amounts of information on each piece, but they're not usually enough to actually help you get the answer. You have to either just know your classic art pieces, or slowly go through the gallery examining every piece to get a full, detailed explanation about its history and creation before Polly yells at you for being stupid for guessing that one. I never had an issue with any of the hints, but that's because I took art history in college. I'll repeat that slightly differently. I learned the answers to this game designed for third graders in college. I can't tell if I'm impressed that they're trying to teach something so early or if I'm frustrated that they're wasting time on something so meaningless that it's still carried very little meaning to an adult in higher education outside of required credits. Unsure of which way to go, I'll give it a pass. The third door contains nothing but frustration from a gameplay perspective. This room will never contain a hidden clue, but you will be forced to come here more than any other room. This is the generator for the entire mountain. As you play games, you'll use up power until you can't do anything until you do a bunch of math problems to refill your power. They don't tell you you're out of power until you're partway through a game, though. You'll set up for the game, do all the work, only be informed that you're out of power and have to leave the room you're in, go charge back up the generator, and return to the room you were formerly in, only to find the entire puzzle is reset because you left. The math isn't hard, it's just a waste of time. Especially when it shows the cutscene of Botley slipping on a banana peel over and over and over. I don't have footage of that cutscene, though. I keep not having footage of things because the game is so repetitive. If you've seen the room and its challenge once, you've pretty much seen it every time. This is normal for all Jumpstart games, as I discovered when I played 4th grade, and isn't necessarily a bad thing when teaching repetition helps to cement things in the mind. So, in playing 3rd grade, I only recorded the last part of the game instead of keeping all of my footage and letting it fill up my limited space on my computer. It figures I still somehow had things I would bring up in this that meant there was no footage for. The last room on the first floor is the music room. You have to solve a word scramble to enter the room, which I don't understand what that has to do with music, but it's fun. Yes, even as an adult, just please stop telling me what a good job I'm doing after every single word, Botley. I love you, man, but I'm not Caillou. Inside is a kind of racist robot who will play music for you. Polly gives you some scrambled sheet music and you need to unscramble it. This takes so long. Every time you move a section of music, it has to stop everything and play that section. Then once you put the music in the right order, he plays a longer version of the entire song. Did I mention it takes so long? Because it takes so long. That's a theme you may have already noticed with the game. It draws itself out to unbelievable lengths. I actually got more of my cross-stitch done while playing the game than I did any other time that week because I had so much downtime where I couldn't interact with the game at all. I do, however, think a lot of that frustration is because I'm an adult. If I was a little kid, the pauses in question, the extra time to think while the music plays, the figuring out of the equations while things move back and forth across the platform, 
I'd be using that time to think. I'd be using it to try and figure out what to do next. It'd be a challenge. I'd be challenged. But when I wasn't challenged as an adult, it just made parts of the game a little unbearable. Moving on up in life to the second floor, we're down to two rooms. The first is the professor's biosphere. You can't physically go inside for the safety of the plants, but Polly has hidden a clue somewhere inside. You send in a probe, and Polly asks you science and nature questions that are meant to help you guess which biome the clue is hidden in. Some of these questions are about things I actually have never heard of and still am not clear on what they are. If you use deductive reasoning, you can usually figure out what the correct answer is, though. Even if you can't, because you're a little kid, there's no penalty for getting the answer wrong. You just go back up to the door and get a new question. Unfortunately, not all the questions are useful. One easy example is that one of the hints you can get is carnivore. Yes, because only one biome on Earth contains carnivores. It's so obvious! The other second floor room is a giant microscope. Well, actually, the microscope is a normal size, and it looks more like a telescope. But it shares a room with an enormous shrinking machine. You need to select a specimen from the shelves based on Polly's clue. The clue tends to be absurdly vague, and while supposedly the weird device will get you more information on the specimens... There's a lot of times where I was just guessing in the dark because the hint and information were useless, and even as an adult I couldn't figure out what they meant by the hint. Once you make your guess, you'll play the worst minigame on the disc. Bodley gets shrunk down and sent inside the specimen. I remembered this game so fondly from playing as a little kid. Well, I guess I was a stupid little kid that liked the only game where I didn't have to learn. This is the slowest, hardest to control, glitchiest breakout clone I've ever seen or played. You have almost no power over how or where you bounce. Just keep being under Bali until you've broken all of the bubbles around the nucleus and then hit the nucleus dead on to collect the hidden item within. The third floor is back up to three rooms, but only two of them are of concern to us immediately. The first is the robot maze. This one actually gave me nightmares as a kid, not joking, because of how hard it was for me. I never understood why I couldn't wrap my head around the game. Now as an adult, the basic idea is that you place the compass directions in order to make the robot who follows them reach the little red box. That's fine at first, but eventually it makes it more difficult as the instructions make you deliberately backtrack and waste your efforts before reaching the box. As an adult, I can understand the goal, and while it annoys me, I can understand why. Little kid me had no patience for wasted time, however, and hated everything about this maze. I think little kid me needs to grow up overall. Sure, some things frustrate me to no end. One perfect example is why don't the teleporters show you where you're going to end up when you go through them? You'll have to waste even more time deliberately failing a run just to check where you're going to end up. The final room is the Stellar Observatory. Polly shoots a clue to the edges of space, and to recover it, you have to shoot radio waves out of a black hole. For a game that takes its science and knowledge so seriously that it will try to teach little kids things that I still don't know as a grown adult or that I learned in college, what is it doing telling kids things escape the pull of a black hole or resist it? That is not how that works. Once you've recovered the radio waves, you unscramble them into four sentences about a constellation. That constellation is where Polly hid the clue. Yes? Uh, you do realize I don't have access to a space program that gets me to booties! With all four clues obtained, you can go to the time machine room here on the third floor. 
at least you hope you can, you need to have obtained a thousand points from the various rooms before you can enter this room. This is absolutely stupid. You'll regularly end missions with almost 2,000 points, but no matter how far above 1,000 points you are, you're sent right back to zero after the, you use the time machine. Also, inside of the time machine room, you'll get more points! As you answer a final question game that I'll get into in a moment, you get points based on answering the questions right the first time. But the only punishment for not getting the questions right the first time is less points, and the points are useless because I can't enter the room without already having accrued enough points. The only purpose to them at that point is, oh, look at me, I have more points than you in Jumpstart 3rd grade, which I'm pretty sure even in 3rd grade would have gotten me punched. If it took the points to activate the machine itself, so that you have to play all the extra mini games only if you couldn't answer the questions, that might make more sense to me. But if you have all the points and all the items, you may enter at last. Welcome to the Wheel of Inanity. 20 episodes from now, I might get a wheel. Yeah, the final room contains a quiz show that will tell you who, when, where, and what you are going back in time to solve, despite you often knowing a lot of those answers already, just from context. In order to solve the game show, you have to answer the questions that are not even remotely related. So, as a demonstration of the strains of logic that it has to go through, we're gonna put on this little game show for you now. We're really not exaggerating. So if you're done talking to the wall, welcome to the greatest game in gaming and you're gonna game at it. You're, today you're playing to bring Amiglio and a bunch of games you didn't want to play back from the past where they were erased into the present where they're not. Your first clue is a box with a rubber stamp in it. It will tell you what your mission is. My mission is to get back Amiglio. Rubber stamps are used to apply ink or pigment in a pattern. But what else can stamps do? Very good! Stamps are part of the machining process to cut metal for specialized processes. What's the art of working with metal called? That's right! Metalworking has existed for hundreds and thousands of years, practiced by all of mankind back to early man. But some industries have just come into being in the last hundred years. What's something that's only come into being in the last hundred years? That's right! The first video game was only made 71 years ago, so you need to go back 71 years and stop Amiglio from destroying video gaming at Flair's orders! I knew this already! Your next clue is a snow globe that I'm not picking up because I don't want to break it. It'll tell you where the first video game was created. Alright, I didn't actually know this. A snow globe is a transparent sphere that contains material that floats around when shaken. They don't actually contain snow though. What is inside a snow globe? What a brisk idea! The snow inside a snow globe is a light white plastic. The military also uses plastics a lot for their operations because it's strong yet light. Plastic isn't very good for figuring out where an enemy is though. What does the military use to figure out where an enemy is? You saw it coming! Radar is a system that uses radio waves to determine the location, velocity, and position of an object. The first video game was also based on radar. Where was the first video game invented? Wow! That's useful to know! Not really. Yeah, we're really gonna keep doing this. For all of them. I'm gonna hammer this point home until that nail is countersunk into the floor. This is what it considers educational. What do you consider it? Your next clue is a tennis ball. The tennis ball will let you know when video games were first created, even though we already told you it was 71 years ago. Tennis, though, is a racket sport played by between two and four players who use the racket to return the ball back and forth on a field of play. What is that field of play called? Return serve. Courts have rules, and it is very important these rules are followed. These rules have existed for 145 years. When would you have been playing if you were playing on a regulation tennis court? 
You rule! It was only 73 years after the tennis rules were finalized that the first video game was patented. What year was that? Now you know most of your information. You've almost saved Amiglio. Can you tell what I think of this yet? Your last clue is a microphone. It'll let you know who you're going to see. Microphones take sound waves and condense them down to a digital format. What is the most popular type of microphone today? How condensing of you! A condenser microphone uses a diaphragm plate to complete a circuit and create sound patterns. It was improved and popularized by two brothers. Who were they? Are you sure? Ha ha ha! The Shore Brothers patented the condenser microphone during the second half of the 20th century. Two men also patented the first video game in the first half of the same century. Who were they? Excellent! You may now use the time machine. So if you couldn't tell what I think, the game is long. It's not very good at educating kids either. The individual games are fun for a little kid, but they'll either be too complicated and frustrating or too meaningless and poorly designed to really be that fun. I could write the game off and say you're better off letting your kid play fourth grade instead since it's a more balanced experience, but that's difficult. Matt and I both remember this game so fondly. We had both experienced it as kids and it had stayed with us as something we had loved well into our college years. I don't like to let nostalgia blind me, but in this instance, I'm not sure how to respond. It may have been that we were kids and we didn't know better yet. I can say there's one thing Jumpstart Third Grade does right though. It inspires children. The idea of time machines, robots, and the cool inventions inspired me as a little kid. They helped me to dream even years after I had played the dream, even if I never actually became a roboticist, the inspiration and imagination was wonderful and worth every moment. And that's something the other Jumpstart games never gave me. So let your kids play it, but don't push them to keep playing if they either find it frustrating or boring. Let them move on to another game in those cases. If this game can inspire one more kid though, it's entirely worth it to try. Ooh, sounds like the time machine's back. Amiglio! Amiglio! Buddy, I am so sorry she did that to you, man. I am all right, but your journey is only begun. Where waves both wilder and more serene. To its ports I've been. What did you say? To its ports. Oh. Oh. Dude, did you see that? That was trying to kill me! Where'd that even come from? Okay, you gotta hold that thought. I need to figure out what's going on here. That's some serious stuff. Whoa. Hey, you gotta be careful, creepy little kid. There's murderers around here. Jumpstart third grade. I cannot call it good or particularly well balanced or well served for teaching, but the power it has to inspire children cannot be denied or ignored. Five out of ten. thing in this voice, would that be a problem? Yes. Why? Well, I mean, you really want to do it in that voice. But you're going to be doing a lot of talking, and it all has to be legible. But if I don't like this, then I'll just let it go longer, okay, right? You sure about this? Hey. Okay! I don't actually know how these open. <laughs> 
or stamps are used to apply ink or pigment in a pattern. But what else can stamps do? Very good. Stamps are part of the machining process to cut pieces of metal for specific projects. What is this process of working with metal called? Very good. Stamps are part of the machining process to cut metal into different shapes and pieces. What is this working with metal called? That's right. Metal working has been practiced for millennium. Even by the early <laughs> Stop it. Just... That's right, metalworking has been practiced for millennium, even by early man. But some industries have only come into being within the last hundred years, believe it or not. What only came to exist within the last hundred years? <laughs> what is that? <there? laughs> <laughs> what? Yep, it's metalworking, I have to kiss! <laughs> okay, okay, maybe I should read you these full things before we try and have you do them. That's right! Metalworking has been practiced by humanity for centuries, even by early man. But some subsections of this have only come into existence in the last couple centuries. What's an example no. of one of these? No, no. Some industries. We are not on the topic of metalworking anymore. <laughs> what? Welcome to the way that this works! Oh, that's gonna be impossible to sort later. Um... See them. Alright, stay in your place. <laughs> Seriously, stop moving him. I actually oh, okay. need him. Alright, so those over there. Take my block of cheese. My moldy cheese. <laughs> Stop recording these scripts in like four blocks. My voice gives out. So if you're done talking to the wall, welcome to the greatest show in gaming. I already forgot the rest of the line. Do I look like a little gay t rat? Time to settle when shaken. Snow globes don't literally contain snow. What is inside of a snow globe? Santa. What a fascinating room. Empty room with a dude and a dog in it. Dude, that's not how you play the trumpet. Naked people. Naked people everywhere. What does the military use to determine where an unseen enemy is? Not snow globes! <laughs> there we go. Nope, not that arm. This one. Surprise my own confusion. Because this. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it's arm up, arm down, whistle. Dude, one of the hints in this game was a f penguin that told me when the Olympics took place. In Penguinia! <laughs> Not where, when. No, that, that was the time frame. It was like the Jurassic period, then it was the Penguinia period. Did you need me to repeat the line? Yes! Your next clue is a pudding. It won't shut up, so we brought it in. Your next clue is a tennis ball. It'll let you know when the first video game was created, even though we already said it was 71 years ago. I shouldn't do that. No, no, actually... You're not wrong, <laughs> and they do that a lot. <laughs> like, I just wrote the way that they write, and that just clicked in my head that, wow, yeah, they do that a lot, don't they? Hey, you gotta be creepy careful. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be creepy careful, kid. Return serve. Courts. Have rules? <laughs> and stuff? <laughs> Still remember the start? <laughs> Your next clue is a tennis ball. It'll let you know when? when? We're on when? Yeah, we're on when. 
for the record, these four items, I went on a site and I said random item generator, and it turned out it just gave it to me in sets of four, which was convenient. And I said, give me a random set of items, and these are what it gave me. And then I tied them back into video games because, well, it was actually less tenuous to do this than some of the crap they pulled in the actual game. This is the Homeland Security board game. It has the word game in it, so it'll let you know when the word game was first written in English. Uh, okay. Yes, Kitty. Ready? No. Go ahead. For the record, we're about halfway done. I, I gathered that much by me being halfway through the four items. Oh, yeah. I can do basic math, unlike most of the people I work with. Go ahead. Pew, pew. I want it zoomed in so that you can see you're zoomed in on, like, the book, and you can see the pages as they flip over, okay? Oh, I can't flip to that page. That might be a problem for you, too. That one also might be a problem for you, too. Okay, that one I can flip, too. Your last clue is a microphone. Microphones will let this microphone, not microphones in general, any given microphone will tell you nothing. This microphone is special. I guess. The condenser microphone uses a diaphragm to complete a, uh... <laughs> this is a load of shit, and y'all know it, and he doesn't want me to do this, and I don't want me to do this, but I have to do this because he needs to get an idea across, so I'm gonna throw this tennis ball at him and you're gonna know where tennis was created. <laughs> Got it? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, you're not Santa. Don't go up the chimney. <laughs>